Um, I am Becky Richburg. I'm your district children's director, and I am so glad that you're here today. Um, this is this has been a long time coming, and this is going to be an exciting day. So um, I'm glad you chose to be here in um, connecting the dots with children's ministry. Um, I want to um, first explain what I'm doing here. Have remote issues. You just don't even want to know. There's a piece missing in one remote, and I couldn't get my phone to connect with the other remote, so here we are. Um, uh, again, thank you for coming. I am glad you're here, and I hope this session gives you, uh, uh, gives you information that you will find helpful. Um, I want to introduce you to our uh, the NEO Kidman team. Again, I'm the director. Lauren Edwards is she is from Broken Arrow. She's our Quinton director. Anthony Baville is from Sepulpa. He's our camp director. Lisa Troxel. Silver Creek. I believe she's in Owasso at Silver Creek. She's our missions director. And then Stephanie Harris is here. She's from Broken Arrow. Wendy Johnson is here. Kaleo. And then um, our friend Bree is from right here at Regency Park, and she's on our council as well. So um, these are the people that if you need information, go see them, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, we are our, our um, not our goal, the goal is not the right word, but um, we are on this, we are on this council for a reason, and we, we want to see our children's ministry grow and be healthy on our district. So um, those are the people that um, if you need some information, you can get with any of us. So the first thing I want you to do, you have several things on your table. There's a small card with a black dot on it. You are at camp. You're going to remember this. So just smile and nod <laughs> like it's your first time. Um, to look at that black dot for just a second. Um, did you know that according to Barner Research, most people who believe in Christ as their Savior do so before the age of 14? Um, many of you probably know that statistic. Uh, I've heard it for, for several years now. Um, the black dot that you're looking at represents the empty space in all of us. There's a spot in all of us um, that can only be filled with one thing. Um, unfortunately, in the day we live in, people are trying to fill that with all kinds of things. They're going to try to fill it with sex and drugs and violence and video games where our kids are related. Um, shopping, alcohol, all kinds of things. Um, we all have this spot, and we all know it needs to be filled. So in the world, we look, we, we try to find what's going to fill that spot. But the only thing that can fill that spot is Jesus Christ, okay? Um, and that's why it's a privilege to minister to children. I always say that if you're going to invest... And I always take this from a business perspective. If you're a business person and you have money to invest somewhere, um, you're going to look at your investments and see what investment is going to give you the greatest return. And in my opinion, <laughs> um, that's why I've been a children's pastor for 15 years, I guess. But in my opinion, in the church, children's ministry is where you're going to get your greatest return. And so I hope that your churches um, see the value in that. And um, my church in particular, we have a very healthy, and um, my church is um, very supportive of children's ministry. And I, I have a nice budget, I'm, I'm trying to say. Now, I, I, I don't want you to think that if you don't have a, a big budget that you can't do children's ministries. That's not true. Um, but I want to say, if your church is doing everything they can to invest in children, 
That's what's important. It's not, it's not, the bottom line is not the dollar sign. It's not how much money you have to invest. The, the bottom line is that your church is investing in children. Um, <clears throat> we, it's our job to introduce our kids to Christ at an early age. Um, <clears throat> our job is to help them fill that spot in their heart with the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Um, so now, what I want you to do, so I think everybody is sitting at a table with at least one other person, and you have a card on your table that'll, that says, this one says yellow table, that one says purple table. So just a few minutes, there's one particular thing that you should share, that I want you to share, each person to share among, in your table. Um, the green one says, share one thing God has taught you this year. Okay, so I'm going to give you just a few minutes if you will share with each other. This is just kind of a, maybe a little get to know you. If you know the people real well, then it won't take you long to share, right? If you don't know them real well, it won't take you long to share, right? <laughs> but go. <laughs>
Clearly, the purpose of the session is to connect, to connect you, for one, with our district council, and then secondly, is to connect you with other um, people who are interested in children's ministry. And um, so, one thing I say about any conference I go to is I get more from sitting around a table like this talking to people about what they're doing. I wouldn't say more. I say just as much. I think about the, talking to other people to see what they're doing as I do in the in the sessions. So um, every conference I've been to, it's all been phenomenal. But I like the, the, the discussions. That's why we're having two roundtable discussions today, in um, in throughout the day. So um, okay, we're gonna play bingo. Anybody like to play bingo? There's no money involved. Okay, so we're not gambling here on the church property. Uh, you have a bingo card. There are bingo cards there, and there are some dots there to cover. Uh, and this is going to be just a little different. So everybody grab a bingo card. Hopefully they're all, um, the bingo cards are all different at your table. If not, So this is the way we're going to do it. I'm going to call it. You can go ahead and fill that free space. I saw Stephanie stick that free space <laughs> on there. She knows how to play bingo. Yes. My, uh, my aunt used to take me to play bingo when I was a kid, and I loved bingo. Now, it was the kind where you bought your cards, you know, and then you won money. Uh, we don't do that. <laughs> but uh, I won some money occasionally as a little kid, and that was exciting to me. But... Uh, <clears throat> um, so, no money involved, but here's what we're going to do. I'm going to call out one of the subjects that's on there, that, that's on the, the thing, and you can, um, you can put your dot on there, and when you get a bingo, you can shout out bingo. I don't have any prizes. There are candy on your table. You have a, everybody has a bag. There's some little chocolates in those boxes if you like that. Um, but um, I want to talk about that subject then and see if uh, anybody has any in, any things that work really well or maybe something that you need help with that somebody else may be able to help you with so um, first thing uh, children's church mark that children's church spot on there <coughs> children's, church. children's church so um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start out I'll, and I'm just going to tell you what we do I don't have any um, really exciting differences. Probably you do the same thing. For our children's church, we go, um, we're in the service. We're in the, the, the big church. You know, you call it big church. Uh, we're in big church until after the music. And then pastor says, okay, children can be dismissed. And when, when, um, when he dismisses the kids, he tells them, he said, okay, go, run, make some noise. And I love that because... Uh, he, he is he's never been one to say oh the kids need to be quiet in church you know he don't it's it's not it's not that's not where he is but 
Our children's church area is directly above the back half of the sanctuary. <laughs> so when we do a game or a song that requires stomping, uh, they can hear it. So uh, th there's, no, there's no getting around knowing that their kids are up there. Um, but uh, the first Sunday of the month, we have family worship. We stay in the service, the entire service. The second and third, I do children's church. So after music, we go upstairs to our children's area. We do children's church. And then on the fourth, or no, no, if there's a fifth one, okay. Missions is always the last one, no matter what it's fourth or fifth. Mission, we have, I have a lady who does a mission lesson with the kids on the last Sunday of the month. So I either teach children's church two or three Sundays, depending on, you know, whether there's four or five Sundays. Um, there's nothing unusual or different about that. Um, anybody have anything that they, that, something that works really well in your children's church that you love? Yes. Uh, I got, in children's church, we have uh, started, uh, I don't teach in children's church, but I do on Sunday night, the kids, we decided to, to uh, have the, like a repeat. So we have kids that don't go to church, and so I do the let, same thing that they did in children's church. If it's just kids there that were in children's church, then it's just a review. I review the uh, lesson, then I play a game, and bingo is one of those. I, I made my own cards mm -hmm. that has different kinds of Bible things on it, mm -hmm. and I use M&Ms and Skittles as mm -hmm. their markers. They, can't, they get a little cup, and they can't eat them until we get through. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the kids love it, and yeah. they'll play it for the whole hour. Yeah. Uh, because they like that. Um, on the bottom of that bingo card, I believe, is a website where you can go make your really? own bingo cards like that. I mean, if you're, I mean, that would be great. It sounds like what you're doing is phenomenal. But just a little hint if you need that. Yes, ma'am. I love the old uh, Jana Alayra music videos, the DVDs, and she does um, motions with all the songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, just, they're, they're just really good. Yeah. I've, I've started doing a mystery. When I was a kid, I remember sitting in children's church, and we had a pastor's wife. Her name was Ruth Payne. And I remember she was the best storyteller I have ever seen in my life. She would tell a story, and she would be so, I mean, she was, mo I mean, she ever, her arms went everywhere, and she was telling that story. She would be so into that story, there would be spit coming out of the side of her. I remember that as a kid. And I remember, and I remember we had mystery seats. So I started doing, again, in my, in my children's church, a mystery seat and I've, <laughs> I've tried to figure out a way to do it through PowerPoint and that really didn't work for me so anyway we're picking a stick and a you know with the seat number on it but mystery seat I mean I just pick a chair and they get a special prize for sitting in that chair you know just nothing nothing special I mean nothing you know exciting or anything just just a mystery seat um, but um, <clears throat> those things are are fun for kids did you have something I, I'm, a, I'm a brand new Skyline. Sure. So I'm just now here. Um, but we're training up our own worship team. Oh, yeah. In the church that I came from before I, I moved here, um, our, our children's church doesn't look like, it looks like adult service, only I make some of the clothes, I guess. Yeah. And so we have our own worship team, uh -huh. and our, we do, instead of what would be considered kids' music, they, we do what they hear on the radio on kids and adults. I have just for a long time, sorry, for a long time, my kids didn't want to sing. I have kids, they just, they just weren't singers. They just wanted to want to sing. Now I've got a few younger ones, four and five year olds that are coming up and they like to sing and they like to do the motions and they like to twirl and dance, they're little girls, they love it. So I've integrated more music back into our services because I mean, if I, if I did a song and was trying to do motions, they would sit there and go, you know. And that's fine. I know. I know everybody's not like that. Everybody doesn't like to do that. So I don't want to force them to do it. But they're still hearing it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we use the same curriculum for uh, Sunday school and children's church. Mm -hmm. And so I, I teach Sunday school, and the children's church uh, director will get with me because in the curriculum there are three to five suggested activities. Mm -hmm. We make sure we're not overlapping. Right. And I like that. I like that. 
like that, like I said in the beginning, I'm OCD, so all of my, all of my kind of goes together. So I love that. I love when everything can be coordinated. Now, my dream church is where nursery, preschool, elementary, teens, adults, the pastor's message, they're all doing the same thing. That hasn't happened at my church. It may happen at your church. I, would, I might come to your church. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but, um, our, anybody, our pastor um, sends out an email on Mondays with like the biblical text he's going to use. Mm -hmm. um, and I have occasionally done a lesson off of the biblical text that he's using. Mm -hmm. um, and so they don't always line up, like the story, like the way his sermon goes and right. the way the lessons sure. go, but yeah. it's still based off of the same thing. Yeah. Um, so we don't do that consistently, but we do it sometimes. Yeah. I think it's a great way for uh, parents to talk to their kids on the way home. You know, we, our scripture was this. What was yours? Oh, it's the same thing. What did you learn today? This is what I learned. You know, I just, again, that's my dream church. The idea is I'm going to go to church because we don't really have a group over here. Like we're in school. Uh huh. One thing I just thought of though, when I was a kid, we used to have Bible drills when you learn a little kid at the time. Uh, books yeah. and chapters mm -hmm. and all. And that's how I really learned, you know, what mm -hmm. things were. Yeah. And then we used to, uh, we used to have a song about the, uh, I guess it did the Old Testament. I didn't learn that, but the New Testament, like, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke, John. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so was that still something good to do? Yeah. I discovered several years, it's been uh, probably 10 years ago or so, that kids didn't know how to navigate the Bible. They had no clue. So I started doing what I call a sword drill on Wednesday well, nights. Well, I think that's what they call it. And um, I have them look up the scripture that, we're, that, that I'm asking them to memorize for that series. I have them look it up. And for four or five Wednesday nights, it's the same one. So they, they know, you know, they... But they can, and we have, I have adult helpers that help them because they're sometimes, you know, from week to week, they're like, well, where was that? I have no clue. So, um, but, but I, 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 I think it's so important that they know how to navigate the Bible. Yes, ma'am. interview they asked me about uh, the fruits of the spirit and I forget the question but I know the, they said something about the fruits of the spirit and I was like okay love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and <laughs> in my head so I could answer their question I had to go through my go through that so um, hey I, however you can learn it I, I love it I love it all right Christmas activities Christmas activities yeah. I am terrible at putting on Christmas pageants, plays, musicals, whatever you want to call them. I don't do it well, so I don't do it. We haven't had one in several years. And I know parents want to see their kids on stage. It really doesn't matter what they're doing. They want to see them. We do have bells. We do have the, you know, the bell, the bell thing. And that is so simple. Every, every Sunday in December, the kids do that. Um, but I don't, I'm just not, I'm not good at Christmas well, plays. I've been going to church when I was a kid, and I love doing that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like, first it's a little verse you remember, and then somebody does it well, and then the other person does, you know, different kids do, and it ain't very long, you just line up mm -hmm. and you do it. Yeah. But it teaches kids how to get in front of people, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm not into Christmas programs, though I have, but I, but, um, the last two years, I've dressed the kids ahead of Christmas. I've dressed them up in costumes mm -hmm. and taken their pictures, and some of them outside with a manger, mm -hmm. and um, and then I put it to I put the pictures together on the computer, made CDs, or this time I made a um, scrapbook, like a cheddar fly book, although mm -hmm. I think it's catfish, and it has the scripture with the picture. The kids are in there, we have a really small kids group. The kids are in there multiple times. 
Yeah. Like, they're a shepherd in this picture, but they're an angel in this picture. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and the scripture goes through the um, Christmas story and also gives a, pretty much a clue of the, the way to salvation. Yeah. So, um, and then I gave every family, it's a small group, a book. So they have it. They have their pictures dressed up in their costumes. Nice. We showed that. We showed the video on the Christmas on the Sunday before Christmas. Mm -hmm. It was just about five minutes long. And yeah. The kids got really quick and did well. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. They like that. That's why I like uh, vacation Bible school. I like groups um, thing. They do the, uh, the what do you call it? The um, Anyway, they have you take pictures of the story that night and put it up, and, you, and the kids love to see themselves up there like that. So I've done something similar to that. I've never done a book, a Shutterfly-type book like that. I think that's and cool. And with a big group, but I had, like, yeah. three families. So. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. That's such a good idea. We we just did that for Bible school. We, oh. we had VBS just two weeks ago, and there was somebody who took pictures and all the activities all around Bible school. Mm -hmm. And then for the program on Sunday morning, just show those pictures mm -hmm. as part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then the pastor had the kids act out the story, do the Joseph all the way through. Yeah. And then we had the music and some of the little stories in between. And that was our program. Yeah. We didn't have any preaching. We just had the kids do it. it right. It I like it. I like it. Yes, ma'am. This past year for Christmas, the uh, did a really professional viewing of the Polar Express at our church. They had adult volunteers that were career train conductors. They served cocoa cookies or carpet. It was an event, and they invited oh, just everybody in the community. We had tickets, we had flyers. Anyway, they blocked the story for it, and I was kind of skeptical in my head because I couldn't really see the vision. Mm -hmm. But we had a ton of families that were there, that go to church in there. Nice. We have family that was, all four of them were just baptized last Sunday, nice. that, that came to the Polar Express. Mm -hmm. It was a very effective ministry tool, oh, nice. and I was surprised. And we have very small department that on, on that particular event, we had a huge crowd. Uh, so it was very effective for us. We'll do it again. Nice, nice. I, I considered that. Um, just FYI, there is a train, a man in our church built for Rocky Railway uh, Group VBS last year. Yeah, last year. And it's huge. And it's being stored right now in the Glenpool Church. Um, if anybody wants to use it, um, it's there. It's it's huge. So it takes trailers to get it out. That's how big it is. But I could not. I could not just dismantle it and throw it away. It was. I mean, it it, it was big and it was phenomenal. And I thought about doing Polar Express, but it didn't. It, it just didn't come together last year. So um, anyway, just um, our pastor uses um, Advent devotionals around the Christmas season, and then does the sermons off of the Advent devotional mm -hmm. and um, whatever curriculum he uses also has a kids version of it right. and so for the month of well i guess for advent season um our lesson mirrors that but it goes through the advent mm -hmm. and so we like the candles and we do everything back in children's church like they do during the sanctuary nice nice yes. again i'm a big fan of consistency and, and doing things together the same thing together doesn't always work never works at my church <laughs> all right all right um our time is slipping away nursery anybody have any um. Bingo! <laughs> oh, look at you! Look at you! Get a piece of candy out of that box. Yeah. I've, I've already had some. <laughs> <laughs> well, have another. I have a few years ago. I found uh, first steps in worship. I believe is what it's called, and there are two different age groups. There's like a tiny, tiny like birth to like up to two years old and then um yeah and then then it's from two to like four at four our kids go to to um to uh, they go upstairs that's a big deal they go upstairs to the elementary 
or the preschool. Anyway, um, there, there are two age groups in that first steps of worship. And it, it, I mean, it repeats the same thing every Sunday. There's one person that I had. Now, this was all pre-COVID. Since COVID, it has been scattered and we haven't been able to get it going back again. But that's one of my goals for the near future. Um, but they go in, they sing the same songs every Sunday. And most of the songs are um, tunes like Mary Had a Little Lamb, but different words to them. And, you know, the, the booklet gives you words to them. And they have a brush, and they talk about brushing their hair, and they look in a mirror. It's, it's really cute for, for little bitty kids. But um, by the time they leave that, if they've been in there from birth to whatever, to uh, like two years old, they should know at least one Bible verse. I mean, they, they would have heard that every Sunday. So, um, <clears throat> So that that's pretty phenomenal. That's about the only thing I what have are you interest. Sing that song? Sing it. Pardon me. What are you doing? Singing that song? Um, well, it, that curriculum has different songs, uh -huh. and she has changed the words to the songs, like the tune to "Mary Had a Little Lamb." She puts wow. different words to it for the kids, and I can't I can't even begin to tell you any of the words or any of the songs because I never did that myself. I had volunteers that did that for me, but. Um, <clears throat> but I mean that could easily be repeated without having to buy that curriculum. I mean you could you could do all kinds of cool stuff. I think there's a little there there's lots of little toys that go with that that you talk about the little baby doll. I know I know there's a mirror, there's a brush. I don't know there's all kinds of little things, but there's that could be so easily reproduced. All right, preschool, preschool. What you got about preschool? Bingo. Oh, bingo. Have some candy. <laughs> There's more candy in your bag, by the way. There's Those colored bags have lots more candy and have a, other, other couple of goodies in there, too. Um, I use Go Curriculum for my for preschool and elementary. And um, Go, G-O, Go Curriculum. Um, you want to teach the lesson? Yeah, I saw your, it's, it's a what's it box, so uh, we finished, I, I don't know, maybe I'm ahead or something. I'm behind. Are you behind? Okay. Well, um, well we're doing Snapshot right now, and I love Snap. No, I, I love them all when I start, but then I get bored with them just like the kids do, so I'm glad they change every four or five weeks. But uh, yes, this is, it's a what's it, so don't peek under the box, because a what's it is whatever you want it to be. You can take any kind of, a, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to teach the lesson for you. <laughs> But um, there, that is fun curriculum, and my kids love, love, love the series and stuff. Um, but preschool, um, I haven't bought the preschool curriculum in the past couple of years because I lost my preschool um, teacher and haven't been able to replace her. My daughter, she moved away. <laughs> <laughs> Had two babies. <clears throat> No, it's not through our church. It's called Go Curriculum is what I use. Now, there is curriculum through the, uh, the foundry. foundry. used to be the Public Nazarene Publishing House. And um, you, can, uh, you, can get, you can get curriculum through the, uh, the foundry. Is the publisher for dogs? Um, uh, oh, my goodness. Um, I can't see. You can, you, it's gocurriculum.com. Just gocurriculum.com if you want to look at that. Now, I will, I will tell you it's pricey. Uh, so if you're looking for a low budget, uh, that, that, that's probably not going to work for you. Um, but, but there's lots nice of. That you can print your own stuff so you don't have to like buy 20 books when you may only have 10 kids or right. whatever. So mm -hmm. that's cost effective in that. But right. Like, it's all digital. So you. You download and print whatever you want, uh, whatever you need from it. I love it, and you can make it. I mean, you can change whatever and make it make it what you need it to be. There is a I'm trying to find the book, but there's a free one out there, and it's pretty good. Um, it's called New Spring Network. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've used a lot of New Spring, and we've used that for district events as well. Uh, I know Stephanie used it at the prayer thing, the prayer mm -hmm. uh, gathering. And then we use it at district assembly as well. So they have lots of stuff, and it's they absolutely free, huh? They have preschool. 
Yeah, they, they do, they do. They have preschool in most of their series, they have preschool in elementary. It's called New Spring Network. Um, and it's are you saying N-E-W? N-E-W, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, my Texas accent. There's one that I can't remember the name of, but it's all for Latinos, and it's free as well. Um, well New Spring, I've used... Yeah. <laughs> New Spring, I've used, I used to use a lot, and it's absolutely free. It's very quality. It's um, videos, your lessons, and music videos, and teaching. I mean, it's got, it's got everything, and it's very, very well done, very well done. All right. Um, I struggle with uh, a little bit because at the beginning of uh, Sunday school hour, I have preschool with my elementary for short school together. And my grandchild, who has her 12 years of I thought, well, let's just do that. And, and then they separate, go to the park, and come back together. And so I have to make sure that it's not something because they can't read. Right. Okay. I have to make sure that it passes both ages. And I I think it's a good idea. I just and I'm creative so I can make it work, but it it's hard to preschool. It know? is hard. Right now, I have four years old through fifth grade all together for everything we do right now. The buddy system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have one older one and one young. I mean, my both my boys are there, so they like try to avoid each other. So the siblings, they don't want like my big brother. I don't want my little brother as my buddy. They want it sometimes anyway. But finding they're really captivated, and if you keep them engaged, I mean that that older one is going to show them how to look up the Bible verse, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. Or so, or Play-Doh, to have them act out the story with Play-Doh if they maybe need some something to, like, touch and keep them occupied. Play-Doh's been my big friend mm -hmm. for those <laughs> multiple days. With the sticks. And the sticks and Legos and any type of, any type of building and engagement to add to the story, mm -hmm. they can comprehend that. So, right. yeah, those little table stories are We're going to move along because our time is, um, we have about, I think, 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, um, Sunday school, I do rotation Sunday school where my kids, we, we focus on one story. Wow. There you go. <laughs> Yay! We focus on one story throughout the month, and on one Sunday, they'll go to uh, history science, where they, my, my husband teaches that one, and he's a big history buff, so he, he teaches in the history part, and then... They're, they have they do sciencey type stuff, and then the next Sunday they'll go to games, and um, we have an opening where we go over the story, and then they go to their class, and so they'll play games, and then the next Sunday they'll um, this Sunday they're going to do art, and then um, let's see a, a drama video where they have maybe there's a video or something, um, but um, that's just that's just how I do, and I won't I won't do Sunday school the traditional way with kids ever again because I love it and the kids like it. They they like um, they like going to the different classes every week. Mine do. Now yours may be different, and that's that's all that's phenomenal. You do you. You do what works for you. Um. Do you use a certain like do you did you write that curriculum? No, I, w I wish I had the time to write it because what I'm using is called Power Express, and it, it's it's you won't find it. Well, you oh. might you might find some. You might find some of them. It's through the uh, Cokesbury, which is Methodist, yeah. and um, uh, that's out now. They have they have some Deep Blue, I believe, that has replaced this. That's um, that is rotation, but they've taken the music out of the Deep Blue. So I'm just I'm a little frustrated with that. That's why, I, that's why I won't fully go into the deep blue. The Power Express is a bit dated sometimes now. Um, so I, I'm, I'm struggling with that a little bit. But um, we love it. I mean, I've been using it for years and I've, I've bought units for, you know, all the major stories and we use them. I try not to use them every year, <laughs> you know, when it comes time for that. But I do, I, I, I pick my story by what we're doing through the Go, Go curriculum, what stories we're doing, and that's, that's the story. So right now we're doing the Ten Commandments in Sunday School because in our um, Wednesday night series we're talking about the Ten Commandments. So.
There again, work for you. I mean, what works for you is what um, what you are quizzing during that time. Do what now? Do you do quizzing? Yes, yes. Um, I've heard lots of people that do quizzing for for Sunday schools that were showing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I love that idea. I really like that idea. All right, vacation Bible school. We could probably spend hours talking about vacation Bible school. Um, we uh, we've used Go and Cokesbury in the last few years more. No, not Go. Uh, group, group and Cokesbury in the last few years more so group because they're big and I like big. When you're doing when I'm doing vacation Bible school, I like big. I like you to walk in the church and it. The church just threw up in that thing, whatever that thing is. So when we had a train, we had trains everywhere. It was great, but I like that. But this past year, we used the, um, the GO curriculum has um, uh, a vacation Bible school, and we use it. It's called Norby. It was a space thing. My kids loved it. And for us, it was just a little less um, daunting than the group stuff was. And it was a little, I mean, it, it, it just worked phenomenally for us, and we were so pleased with it. Um, I love group VBS. I love, love group VBS. I've used Cokesbury. I like them too. Um, there's a lots of good ones out there. Um, and then I know lots of people like to do sports camps for VBS. So. All right, the next one is volunteers, and we're going to have a volunteer uh, session here, so we're going to skip right over that one. All right, Bree? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and then... Um, Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights is probably my main focus. Um, I, like I said, I have children's church on Sundays, but um, Wednesday nights is probably what I spend more of my time on than anything else. So, um. what do you do on Wednesday nights? I use that Go curriculum that I've been talking about, and we just have a regular service. I mean, I have um, I do announcements. I do. I mean funny uh, holidays like, um, I don't know, Hot Dog Day, you know, we talk, next Wednesday is Hot Dog Day. Um, I used to try to, if, if one of those fun holidays fell on a Sunday or a Wednesday, like uh, Kazoo Day, if it fell on a Sunday or Wednesday, I might have kazoos for everybody. Um, I've gotten, <clears throat> that hasn't worked real well for me lately, so, um, um, but there Can are a million. Tell why you use Wednesday night is the focus? Is it because you're going to have the same children there where you can build up, build on? I have more kids on Wednesday night than I do in children's church. Oh. I have more kids and more of those that don't come on. Basically, I'll have most of them. Now, there are a few that just come on Sundays, but most of the kids uh, that I have on Wednesday nights don't come on Sunday morning. That, that's just that's just how it is at, at my church. So now, are they coming with family or are they yes. being mm -hmm. picked up? Now, a lot of it is that their parents are divorced, so Sundays they're with the other parent, <clears throat> and that's that's a big group. That's basically one family who has like seven kids. Um, they're with there's there's two different you know two two families there, and they're yeah. with the other parent on Sunday. Yeah, that's a good and point. so. Um, that's that's just how it works out for my uh, my context. So, all right. Um, so you should have a blackout now on your bingo card. Yay! All right. So one more. Uh, well, a couple more things before we go. There's a, another card that has a fuzzy dot on it. It's green. If you look at that, in the middle is a small blue dot. So I want you to get that, and I want you to stare at that. Stare at that blue dot in the middle and see what happens to that blue dot after you stare at it for just a, just a bit. <clears throat> Anybody have anything happening? Or is it just a fuzzy blue dot? <laughs> now, I had to do what? I can't see the blue dot. That's that's exactly it. That's the that's the um, that's the key. After, when you look at it for a while now, for me, I looked at it and it would start disappearing. It would get smaller and smaller, and then I would like something would happen and it would come back. So I never never would disappear for me. So, um, but um, when you focus on the dot in the center, 
It was supposed to disappear, okay? <laughs> and for somebody it did. Yay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, now, <clears throat> focusing on our relationship with God can help us with all the distractions. And there are lots of distractions in our world. I hope, I, I would think, you, I, I think you would agree with that. Um, <clears throat> there are lots of distractions, even in ministry, in, especially to me, in children's ministry, there are lots of distractions uh, that can get our focus off of what what we need to be really focusing on. Um, <clears throat> my, my idea here is that um, if we'll focus on Jesus, then um, those distractions won't be so distracting, okay? You understand where I'm going with that? Um, <clears throat> Hebrews 12, 2, the first part of that verse says... Um, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who is and who shapes and perfects our faith. Hebrews 12, 2. Um, that's how we get through those distractions, keeping our focus on Jesus. And I have that has never been so true for me as it has lately. Um, even in the past couple of weeks, my focus can be can get shifted very easily. To things that um, that just I just don't need to focus on. So um, I want you to think about these questions for a minute. Sorry, it's time to pray for my church. Uh, I want to think about these questions for a minute. What challenges will you face in your ministry this year, and how can you stay focused on Jesus in the midst of those challenges? <clears throat> in your um, in your goodie bag. The, the colored bags that are sitting on there it has candy in it. There's a rubber duck down at the bottom. I want you to take that duck, and then one of the cards, there's a blue card on your table as well. And um, I want you to remember that I want this rubber duck to be a reminder to you that you make a difference in a, in a child's life. Okay? You make a difference in a child's life. And it may just be one child today, one child this week, one child this month, one child this year, whatever. But you make a difference in a child's life. Have you heard the, the starfish illustration? Surely you've all heard that. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I wanted to use it, but I know it's used a lot. So, uh, Bree, don't, uh, oh, well. <laughs> it's all you had to do is say, I don't know it. <laughs> so, you don't know it. Okay. A man's walking along the beach and he comes across this kid and this kid's picking up starfish, throwing them back in the sea because the starfish have, the, the tide has brought all the starfish in and if they don't get back in the water, they're going to die. And so the little boy is throwing them, throwing them. And the man says, there's no way you can save all these starfish. Why are you doing this? You're, you're going to a lot of trouble. You're going to a lot of work for, for you know, these starfish. And so the boy thinks for a second and he picks up one and he says, but I can save this one. And I can save this one. And oh my God, I get chills with that. But I try not to think about how many kids I can impact. I can tell about Jesus. I try to think of um, that one. And not one in particular. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I have one kid that I'm focused on. But um, I don't want to get overwhelmed with the number of kids. I want Jesus to use me for um, for just helping that one. So um, I believe our time is done. I want to um, the scripture on the bottom of the card, the little rubber ducky card says, "We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about His power and His mighty works." That's our job. That's our, our goal, my goal. So I'm going to leave you with this um, prayer. I, I want to I pray, and then I want to leave you with this blessing. Father, we thank you for what you mean to us. Lord, thank you for calling us where we are. Sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> sometimes it, it just seems overwhelming to me. Sometimes I get um I get caught up in other things and think, why am I here? What am I doing, Lord? But I know you've put me here for a reason. 
And I know you put each one in this room for a reason. So, Father, I thank, I pray that you would bless each ministry represented here, Lord. Bless all the people um, in this room. Bless their ministry, Lord. And I pray that they would uh, continue to reach kids. Lord, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, and may the Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Yes, make our efforts successful. Psalm 917. So, um... I am done. Our time is over. Oh, by the way, the red bags don't have a flash drive. Um, I ran out of flash drives. So if you don't have one of the flash drives, you can rob one from another bag. Um, they're little green flash drives. That <laughs> so thank you for coming.